Well, we're getting underway immediately with our second match. That's Matty Challen getting us going. He's taking on Joe O'Connor. This is still from the first round. Obviously, we've got 128 players, 64 pros, 64 qualifiers, and that's obviously 64 matches, and we're doing that over three sessions of 16 games. So we've one session down. This is our second session, and Joe O'Connor's going to get the first, first chance here. Hot off a good result in the snooker, making it through to the final this week. Is that Championship League? Yeah. Right. Lost out to Mark Selby. Obviously. Easy draw in the final. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. They, pla they practice together, don't they, anyway? They're, they're, I think they're buddies, aren't they? Both from sure. Leicester, yeah. Not 100 I know they I'm pretty sure they used to practice together, at least, even if they don't now, but... Yeah, Joe's very good at pool. He obviously made a final. Um, and he's not been in that many events, has he, to be fair, so... Um, yeah, I think, did you play, I think you played him in his first Ultimate Pool match. Yeah, I thought we were on the TV for that. Well, it first changed format to the to the top 32, not being straight in, if you like, but um, into the last 64 where we had to qualify as well. So, yeah, I had him and uh, he had a pool roll off a long way, to be fair, in that match. But I think I've got beat him 7-3 or 7-4, played okay. Yeah, well, since then he has gone on to have a really good run and, and some really good results, made the final middle of last year he was so close to him that, that's the shot where Christophe Lambert played one of the craziest shots I've ever seen in my life <laughs> were you on yeah. comms for that? Uh, yeah it was uh, <laughs> It was incredible wasn't it? I mean I saw it coming as well I thought oh that is going to flick the yellow out of the way and knock it Oh, not, oh, gone, not gone well at all that unfortunately and that's the snooker uh, he's not played to hit the yellow there but that's where this cue ball and particularly the new cloth will catch out the snooker players temporarily because that's gripped more than he's expecting. He's expecting to kind of track the line of the red, and he's just like a ball's width offline, if you like, and uh, now you're in trouble. Because uh, what does he do with that red on the cushion? Probably, do you hold back here? The problem is the two yellows block the double. If it was just one yellow, you could move the yellow over the pocket, but both yellows block the double. I don't know if it trebles to the top corner, maybe, if that's what he's thinking. No safety options now. Maybe it's a treble to the top left as we look. He knows all the shots and all the angles. And he's a junior world champion as well, isn't it, Paul? Joe? Yeah. And he started started his Q Sports career in Paul, as far as I know. So, yeah, he's looking at the treble. This will square up. He's more likely to miss this to the left cushion than the top cushion, in my opinion. It will square up off the second cushion to how hard he hits it. Oh, he's paid the back though. It did go. Oh. oh, that's incredible. What a shot. Oh, why? And I he had no idea. He, he can't have had the full pocket there. That was a quarter of a pocket. Is there a replay on that? That was that must have gone so oh, close we'll to both those years. What a shot that was. We will see that again. That was incredible. I did not think that went. Well, Joe O'Connor coming up big in the opening frame here. I think the cup rate's working better from the other side on this table. Might be the referee's racking though. Not a huge explosion, but a ball's found a pocket. Oh, is this? See, I felt like this is what was happening in my game on there. You weren't kind of getting nice layouts off the break. He hit them well. And this one's the last ball rolling, comes and just sits on the cue ball. Yeah, and he's got no no attacking shot here, has he? Apart from a very tricky plant that's well off angle on those two yellows. Oh, he's kind of hitting the first one full ball, to be fair, so it's not as tricky as it might look. No, I don't think. He's going to be on the one over the middle if he plays this. Might be over the, on the one over the left middle. He screwed it out. Yeah, that's nice. This one goes bottom left. And that one's got enough room to go bottom right that he's used to plant. So, yeah, take these three. I think the two up the top last. Come track back down for the eight ball. Probably in the bottom right. Yeah, that one that's come up the table, obviously you can't see it now, but it's gone to a nice position to connect to the the right centre. Oh, it's tight. I don't. I th he's tried. I don't know if he's tried to take the two up the top first. Well, I'm just not sure he needed to. But he's then your natural mind is to to kind of pull it on the thick side because you're trying to trying to screw up the table with a bit of an angle. So I'm sure he had most of the pocket there, but he's just just pushed it thick. That's the pet hate of the snooker players, though, isn't it? Kind of, they maybe expect to run out of position every now and again, where the cue ball and the game's a bit different, but they don't expect to miss any pots, really. Yeah, don't miss the pots. 
So we get to see Matty Challen for the first time. Maybe a new name for a lot of players with Ultimate Paul, but very good player. Plays challenge matches, doesn't he, I believe? Yeah, he's also been in England international. I remember playing for England with him at, at one stage. How do you rate how do you rate the chances for this match then? Do I think he's a, I think he's a, a pretty good chance actually. I, I don't I don't think it's gonna be a case of a qualifier coming through and deer in the headlights kind of thing and playing against a, a big name player. I think, you know, Matty's you know got an awful lot of confidence in his own ability and it won't worry him at all who he's playing and the fact he's on the T V table. Obviously the things he's gonna have to get used to is the how the table plays and and obviously the other elements that come maybe a little bit later on if we go deep in terms of 15 seconds a shot and, and clock management obviously that's less of a factor at races to 10 but Matt is a very very good player has he made this just a little bit tricky -ish? now I thought he could have gone top left there and top the white through to play the red he's just played in the bottom right corner and maybe made it all connect a bit better he knew he was going to leave himself a bit off angle here just not sure how these three join together now he's playing yeah, you just got to make sure you don't don't leave yourself mm, awkward when he has. Yeah, I think if we went back f two shots there, he was pretty much the perfect angle to play the play the ball he's about to play now to the top left corner and just top through. He couldn't do much with the shot he played two shots ago because he, he uh, didn't have all of the middle pocket. He could only really drop it in, so he couldn't play position. Oh, he's loading this up with right hand side. He's probably going to hit that yellow on the cushion. Oh, he's missed the pot because of it. Controlled it well, but yeah, I just think four shots out there. He's he's uh, missed a trick, which is easy to do on the shot clock. Even that's 30 seconds. It still feels quite quick. Can catch you out at times. Certainly caught me out on one shot. Joe just going to bide his time. Yeah, and I mean, when Matt hits these. It's He's, he's going to leave the one near the eight ball that you'd have thought, which is the one Joe wants to get out of the way. Or he's going to move move the red so that at least that ha has an extra pocket. You really probably want to hit the one on the cushion, ideally, or or try and pop one somehow, hit it hard. I think the safety option is, yeah, the best he could hope for was that Joe was very awkward bridging on this, you know, next to the eight ball, but now that he's not, it's a very good chance, so... And that was a um, risky way to play the shot. There wasn't much benefit. However he hit that, he was always leaving this ball. So, And a um, pretty nice finish. The only, the only thing is, does the eight ball go bottom right? Does it have enough pocket? If not, the one on the left cushion till last. You just want to make sure you've got plenty of angle to get back across the table. Somewhere on this line now between the two yellows you want to be on basically just punch it across or drop I'm sure he's dead straight drop this in and then just punch a bit so he has left himself pretty straight there maybe the eight ball does go bottom right no maybe not deep screw then Can you top it through for the middle or deep screw for the same pocket I think it does have half a pocket but I think he's okay. I think he's has he got half a turn just to get behind it nicely to right centre I don't think he's going to play it in the right corner yeah deep screw Lovely shot. Actually overdone it a little bit. No, it's going to pull up. Oh, nice shot. He's got no idea on the pace of the table, has he, really? <laughs> and it lands plumb. <laughs> it's, it's only travelled about yeah. nine foot. Nine foot and lands absolutely plumb. Oh. Not left, not left like a road map chance. There's a bit of work to do came right across this break just a fraction it is to be fair but yeah, you can see the spin on the ball right hand spin pushes the cue ball to the left as he looks and that's tracking down that side of the table then and it's amazing how big those pockets play <laughs> off the break <laughs> yeah they, they can uh, they can suck them in can't they it's, uh I've been working on more the the Jack Whelan style break where you kind of deep screw. And Christy was doing it on Monday when we was hearing you on the comms saying I can't believe he's getting that much power ripping the cue ball back, but um, he was. Yeah, they were really exploding on him. So um, kind of going down that route, and a lot of the time, 
you can't you can't particularly go off in the middles. You can occasionally screw into the top corner, but they seem seems less likely to do that. So he's playing this off the red. I don't see how it comes out from there because I don't I don't think he can hit this hard. So maybe move the yellow away enough so it goes in the same pocket. We move the yellow. He didn't mean to do that. He meant to move the red. Do we call that a fluke? <laughs> it hasn't really helped him though, has he? No, not at all. Right still, at the bottom is still a problem. And still a fluke though. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I'm joking. Um, he can top up. If he can top up to the sort of... Oh, he's going to screw into it now. Again, hard to see good things happening here. Really tried to control it. He's, he's done well, but that was kind of the best case scenario. So if he hits it any harder, the yellow's bouncing on and off the cushion. Um, don't think he can get into cue it and screw back very easily. And I don't think he's got the angle to kind of pinch the pocket and, and move away. <laughs> Here we go. This is this is exciting. He's going to jack right up and play like a Masse. Oh, no. Change of mind. Oh, he's had a right swipe. Yeah, he seemed to take his time getting himself in position and then swipe at the it. The beep did go just as he got there. <laughs> <laughs> Things just, just put him off. Beep whack. <laughs> It was quite funny. So another opportunity for Matty Challen, his second in the match, and a chance for him to settle in. Don't like that, but he's okay. He's better, better that that didn't go in, really. He's always pushing the yellow to an awkward spot, playing it that way. He had other options. It did cut in the middle, which I think had a bit more control than the shot he played. It's just one of those where he's putting that he knew couldn't hit it too hard because of the moving the other yellow too far. But he's, he's yeah, not enough Joe anything to really go out here. He's trying to try and try that yellow up a bit more. And he's pushed that too far. He was trying to leave that so the yellow wasn't particularly potable. So another chance for Matty. He'd like to get settled because you can see he's kind of um hasn't settled down yet. Another shot where he really wanted to be on the one to the middle there. But again, this table will catch you out. It's very grippy, very quick. So he probably wanted to track the line the other side of the eight ball there. I know he's bridging and those two yellows up in the top stop him from being able to reach with his hand. So I don't know how accessible that one is to the middle on the line he's got now. We can't really do much with the cue ball. Yeah, he's not on it. So it's fine. It'll go later. It'll be his last ball now, most likely. You don't want to be doing having to do too much work with it later somewhere you want the white somewhere around the eight ball in four shots time. Little double kiss here. Yeah, nice shot. Well controlled. Yeah, it's really just not the ideal last ball here. What do you think of the format anyway, Simon? Were you part of devising this one? Or? No, I, not, not at all. No, I, I like the format, though. I do like to see variety, so I like the fact we're getting slightly longer races. I think it's something that the players are, you know, have wanted to see is you know, a tournament here and there where they can just a little bit more chance to get themselves bedded in. And I, I really like the Open, though. I think the Opens are fantastic. I think you know, it's great to see qualifiers come through, and I think we'll see one or two of them run deep and, and push the the pros this week well a few of them could easily be pros couldn't they well that's very true is he playing the double here double that's keeps it clean doesn't it it's not ideal for the cut now I don't think I'm sure he's flicking the red on the way through and then blues have been control a bit yeah he did play the double and they do square up it's just it's just one of those where you're just not quite settled so everything feels like it's harder than it it maybe could be and he's going to be wedged in snooker here in a minute behind those three balls unless one of them pots the only thing is Joe's tying his balls up a little bit here sometimes you have to do that he tried to keep them more open clever shot just got the snooker but now if he'd grazed off those thin obviously they would all, all three would have been bunched up so he played it a different way to keep them open so this needs to go in really Tried, tried the proper way of playing it. Try to put it in that top left. Very close, a very good effort that. 
This feels like a longest shot for a pool player, but for Joe, this is basically sitting over the pocket, isn't it? So. Maybe not. Yeah, made a bit of a mess of it. Just came across it slightly. You could see there a bit of unwanted side on the whites, <laughs> where, the, where the spots are good for seeing. He just slightly queued across that one. He also sort of tried to stun it. I thought he was just going to roll this through because the cue ball's going to throw that little bit wider. It'd be on the one at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. But again, that's kind of pool player knowledge, isn't it? As a um, as a snooker player, you feel like you, until you've played a few frames, like like you said earlier. It suits Joe better because he's got time to settle in this format. Yeah, nice shot from Matty. We, that will settle him down, even though. So that's amazing because this is what he was doing on the tour. There's not that much power in that break at all, but he just. Sometimes that's a better thing because you do tend to get nicer splits where the balls don't kind of go around the table and then cluster back up. They just. When you hit them at that pace, they just kind of open up, like you can see. That quality of strike, isn't it? Yeah. Over the getting that as full as possible, catching it flush, getting every power through. For me, you only really get away with that that power on a cut break um, when you're on a, like conditions like this. I don't think you get away with it on an older cloth or a slower cloth. They'll just they'll just cluster up on the cushion. But because the conditions are so good here. Just trying to work out that one tricky yellow on the right. He wanted the angle to nudge it out here, but I think I think he's a fraction thin on this. I think he's can't put some pace into this. Maybe graze it. I think if he puts any pace in, he'll miss it. So yeah, he's just played the soft edge just to push it on, so it went down the rail, and he's just missed that by a fraction. Good knowledge though. He fully understands the small cue ball and what that means you can do for things like that with cannons it's very easy to catch you out not sure on that red and yellow together either where that definitely goes left centre I don't know if it goes bottom right but he's kind of chasing a little bit now He was playing for that in the top top right, was he then? To come across, he didn't look like he's happy with what happened, and what all he think? did was roll it in. Do you think he was playing for the double? No, I don't think. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but I don't think that goes. That this. Well, we didn't think the last one. No, went. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm no good for help there. Um, maybe he was going top top right with this one. He wanted to be a bit straighter on it, and then kind of track through the gap of those reds, and it's a good place for the cue ball to be for stuff to happen. The double certainly goes if he takes the other one first. It's just, is that yellow, yellow and red, is the yellow in the way? The two that are together. I certainly didn't want to be here. It is the double. Simon knows everything. Commentator's eye. Oh, that's close to a time foul. That looked like oh, a time foul. Oh, he's, he's happy. Yeah, I'm not surprised this is going to be looked at. He, he walked around calm as you like, but for <laughs> me, this is about a second over. We will see this one again. The referee is going to come and, and check on the on the VAR. All about sleight of hand, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about looking the part. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly tried to fall. He, Joe's fooled me there. That's quite amazing. What time foul? Yeah. What beep? <laughs> it, it looked like he was over by quite a margin, although I've been fooled by that before. Sometimes when it looks over, he's just about okay, but... This is what caught me out actually on one shot because I've kind of tried to work a pause and a, and a bit more of a, a smoother cue action into my game. But of course, you then need that extra second or two <laughs> compared to just stabbing the ball in. So it did catch me out. I thought I can't really, haven't really got time to cue this how I want to. And it's kind of fluffed out. It was just a ball down the cushion. But super important to get this one right though because obviously he's made the double. He's on the yellow into the centre, and essentially you feel that's frame over of it if it's a legal shot. If it isn't. Then cue ball in hand for, for Matty. This should be pretty quick counter for him. So huge moment early in this match. So important that our referee team get this one right. Oh, that's so close. I've just seen what they're looking at on the replay. That's so close. Well, 
If you had a, if you had to put how many seconds were left, it's going to be milliseconds either side of zero here, whether it was a foul or not. Oh, it is a foul. Foul's being called. Wow. Oh, that's big. Milliseconds. That is big. That's that's Formula One technology. That is. And considering you know Je Joe's let Matty off in the previous frame as well, yeah, assuming. He clears up here and makes it 2-2. Two, two. You know, it really could have been 4-0 in terms of the way it's gone. See, the better ball to track up the table here is the one he's playing last. If he just rolled that through, he could play bottom left, then... I mean, it should be fine. I'm splitting hairs, but... This can be funky if the cushion doesn't react properly, whereas if he leaves that one bottom right last, he's tracking up a good line. Like I say, I mean, he's fine here. But yeah, the cushion did, did uh, trap on him there. So, I mean, he's got more of a shot to play than he should have, but it's fine. Just these things can kind of build up over a game where you, you maybe go a slightly harder way than is available. Two frames off. Over Anthony Morris. He'll take on Sean Hackett in the next round. Dylan Leary's completed victory. 10-5 uh, over Kyle Bedford. And he'll take on Andrew Smith in the next round. All the losers go into the loser's side of the draw as well. We'll keep you updated as we're going along. Most of the matches from the first session of 16 games are complete. Couple still going on. That Tom Cousins one, the one we're keeping the keenest eye on. Good break from Matty, but not the best of layouts. He did lose the cue all over to the other centre this time, but a lot of power on that break. Nice first shot. Well controlled there. He definitely plays with a lot of control. He's not smashing into balls and he's a very good plan for getting balls out and stuff. It's been, been a bit unlucky how that has come out, but just with the awkward bridging. Yeah, he's hit that nice. So, I'm not sure how accessible that yellow is on the right and the bulk line near the red. He has got the natural angle now to kind of track the red, but it could go through the gap as well, so it's a risky shot if he decides to play that one. He's played it with more control. He was actually trying to get towards the red there, but at a pace where he couldn't snooker himself. I'm not sure how easy it is to clear these last three balls up now. Played that very nicely. Maybe too well. <laughs> He's overheld it. Yeah, it looks a touch straight. I think he can just... It's very hard to do that. <laughs> yeah. Always on the side of going too far, that one. But He can deep screw it. Towards It's not a nice line to come in on, but yeah, he's forcing it, like you say. Commentator's eye again. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, Great a shot. Beautiful shot. Really played that well. There was very little angle there at all. He just had that tiniest amount and made the most of it. He set these really well. Not an easy finish, this one. Couple of problems to deal with, no problem. Nice comfortable eight ball to uh, take the lead. Yeah, quite incredible really, the way this match has gone that we're saying that, but Matty Challenge won three straight and he has the lead now. And by far and away his best visit to the match, probably the best clearance of the match so far. That used to be his flag when he was he used to play a lot more in the days of the UK tour. He's had quite a breakaway and just starting to get back into it. That same ball again, Joe. I think he's made that red in the middle every time. The ball he's hitting that is one of the balls that can go straight in when you cut break. But very controlled and keeps leaving open chances. He's, he hasn't got a great starter ball here. I think he'll take the yellow to the top left corner from the normal view or the top right corner from this view and just punch punch across so once this goes in they're all pretty open from there he's caught it thick second pot missed again the beep beep as he pulled his backswing might have distracted him he won't be used to that at all from the snooker background but what a chance again for Matty so the problem yellow is the one near the red there near the racking triangle I think you can get it rid of it third shot here so play the yellow straight down to this bottom right corner natural angle on the one to bottom left corner and then you're up for your tricky ball and then the rest will have a bit more margin for error that's how I'd see it you can see that's the one he's got all his focus on how is he going to get into that area where he just pointed his cue he's not he's not seen a ways comfortable doing it 
gone straight at it. That's also fine. Very nice shot. Again, it won't check side as much as you think. That's why he's looking confused. You just don't get that grip off the cushion with these new cloths and clean balls and everything. It hasn't, hasn't got anything to grip onto when you put that lots of left-hand spin on, but it almost came off as if there was no spin on the ball. So confused him a bit. He was trying to miss the red completely there, and he's hit it full ball. So He's OK, fine. though, yeah. Still has a, another option. And this is why you need to get rid of your bad balls early, because you have that margin for error if you do get shot wrong later on. Whereas if you're leaving it late and you don't land where you need to land, you're in trouble and you've only got one ball left on the table or whatever, so. Probably try and stay away from the plant here. I mean, it's fine, but there's a very small chance this ball ends up on the rail. He's, he's played it in a way where it shouldn't, but could have played bottom left first and then just the one over the middle and the ball he just hit then last but that's fine and uh, we didn't see this coming at 2-0 to be fair I certainly didn't no and it's amazing isn't it it was a let off from Joe O'Connor miss popped the bottom left it let Matty in he's made the couple of balls required and He's been released, allowed him time into the foul. match. Time and foul then the, the next frame. Time foul in the next, you're right. And yeah, 4 2 now. David McNamara 8 1 up over Matt Peel. That is the first quarter of the draw. We'll show you the results a little bit later on. We'll keep you up to date with the Tom scoreline as well. That's the cleanest hit he's had yet. Still tracked towards that left centre as we look. But very good power and very middle of the cue ball strike. In fact, there's not much spin on that white there. Um, maybe just an aiming thing just aim slightly across the ball it's easy to do again when you break you see very few people that can keep middle in the break at f a good amount of power oh, you know Jack Whelan's the first person that springs to mind Gareth Potts where they can really keep ripping the break and keep tracking that cue ball straight out the middle of the table all day you know seems it's effortless very rare that we see Jack Whelan anywhere but the middle of the top cushion isn't it yeah, he's got he's got a very clever cue for that though, whatever it is or technique, because there's always spin on the white one way or the other. It spins left and it spins right, but it always tracks back up the middle. Very rarely actually middles the cue ball, but he always middles the line. So he's got something going on there that's quite clever. It's obviously the way he hits the ball or the type of tip he uses. Whatever it is, it holds the line even when he puts a bit of spin on there. So obviously I'm not saying he's coming across miles, but it does often really dart left or right when you watch off the top cushion. Slightly awkward here for Matt. He's not landed positionally. He's eyeing up a three-ball plant now. Yeah, and this is a pretty comfortable shot, to be fair. Just don't try and do too much with the white. He's under-hit it. Is it reaching? Oh, wow. Good shot. The yellow hasn't tied itself up, which it could have done. Good control again. He, he's a very controlled player, you can tell. I haven't, I haven't seen any of him play before this, so... Um, yeah, he... Very good pull brain from what I've seen. Oh. oh check side, throw him wide, slippy conditions. Well, having been let off and let into the match, has he now let Joe off as we see another look at the, the three ball plant? Just the clock and he, he played it with right hand side and he's probably after his first few shots thinking, well, what's the right hand side going to do? And I think he's distracted himself there. That was, wasn't a lot to that part. It was all about the cue ball. We're going to see another swing, do you think? That's the turning point back to Joe's favour. And it's one of the beauties of having the longer races. You do, you can have more chances for swings back and forth. Joe's going to try and maybe land under this boy. No, to be fair, he doesn't need to play the red off the yellow. He can land short position on that one that doesn't go bottom right. So, yeah, this is fine. In an ideal world, if the other red wasn't there, the red closest to the cue ball now on the bottom cushion, he would have left the angle to probably play the other red off the yellow to free the pocket but it's not yeah he can play short position anyway on the awkward ball kind of just track in there now maybe just above the yellow don't want to land you want to land pretty straight on it yeah he's tracking away from his work a little bit he wanted to be a bit a bit straighter 
I think he can just about hold the white to a sensible position. He's only got to drop the last ball in. Natural position on the eight ball in the same pocket, so... Yeah, he's fine. Perfect. It's a good shot. Natural angle is to just track up towards that yellow in the middle of the table. Towards the middle... well, literally towards the middle of the table this will go. Pinpoint right the way through. Yeah, very good. Frozen out for a couple of frames and <laughs> red didn't quite make it this time. Very consistent break. I think there might have been a tiny gap there because it looked like it just tracked high the whole way and didn't have the same pace it's had the first couple of breaks he's hit. What a chance these are this time. Yellows. The only real tricky yellow is the one on the right cushion. And you can use the yellow nearest the right middle to move the red to free the eight ball. So just that one on the cushion to think about. Plenty of options to get there. It's just however he sees best. This Wait. one, you want to make sure it moves right out of the way. Oh, nice. She's gone it straight away. Perfect. So now the only ball to really... <laughs> so they've all, they all need a little bit of care, to be fair. They're all open, but you've got... The reds all play like dustbin lids here. Just got to make sure you pick a nice route. Give yourself some margin. They kind of... All the reds have got a case for blocking all the others apart from this one in the middle of the table. The reds are kind of making you work a little bit harder. Again, it's something on a table you're comfortable with that there's no problem, but on a table where you're not sure how it's reacting and how it's trapping off the cushions. And obviously, check side takes away one of your options. It doesn't really work on here very often, so you just have to be a bit more cute with your patterns. How's he looking? Yeah, he's, on, he's on all three balls, to be fair, one way or another, so. And he's took these well. Found a nice little... You see how close he had to get to the reds there, though? It was, um, he found a nice little line there, a nice couple of gaps. He went through the through those two reds at the top of the table twice, once with a cue ball and yeah, once on the way out with a cue ball. So that was his plan. He's, he's found a really good route here. Not as easy as he's making it look. Big difference from the first two frames, though. He wouldn't have, wouldn't have wanted to take these out, I don't think, the first couple of frames, but... It just no. needed to be precise, isn't he, in a couple of places that didn't feel like it was quite there. We spoke too soon. Yeah. I, I was thinking on the previous shot, he would love to have been straight. Yeah. But it, he was happy, so I wasn't you know, wasn't too concerned for him. But, yeah, that's a... It's another table thing that's caught him out, though, because yeah. he's thinking he's perfect, though. He's put no spin on it. It's just a top spin shot, and it's thrown a bit wider than he's expecting, and it's bounced less off the cushion, so it's caught him out. But, it's, again, it's this is why you have to be so careful on, on these conditions. That, yeah, he looks fine, he's happy with that. And yeah, he's expecting the white to miss the red further and also bounce more. So it's a double-edged sword. It's so easy to do that out there. Nothing he's really done wrong, to be fair. Just the shot before, obviously he wanted to land straight, he didn't, but... That was always the side of straight you wanted to be, tracking up the table. And yeah, just didn't, didn't happen on that occasion. It's a big turning point, 5-3 to... Four all. Well, they've both given each other a couple of frames as well. Start again, race to six, shall we? Joe's still got to get these, just uh, as long as he lands somewhere sensible on the one to the bottom cushion. Probably, it doesn't have to be last ball. If you're comfortable, you could play this three rails and you landed on all three balls then. If you kind of stick the cue ball in the top area of the table, he's nearly gone enough. So you could play it that way, but obviously if you're not comfortable with the table or if you want to drop them in, then this way is fine as well. But no problem. Don't even need to get into the top half of the table for the eight ball anywhere. Anywhere. Uh 
quarter of the way up the table would do. This will trap off the cushion so you won't get that high anyway. But anywhere near under this middle pocket. Let me stand it up. Fine. Now well, we're going to be 4-4 four, four, one way or another. Both players will feel like they could have been certainly ahead. Same sort of... See the left hand spin on the cue ball there. Just makes it track to the right as he looks or the left as we look. So absolutely fine. It's a great chance. But... Um, yeah, you just see, so he's come across both ways. He's come across a fraction left and a fraction on it. It is only a fraction, but it will take the white that far off line when you're hitting the ball that hard. But you couldn't really ask for a much better opportunity than this. Red ball's in play. done here <laughs> he didn't play for there I think he's playing for the one he's on he's on a ball the middle of those three reds does I think go to the bottom left as we look he can definitely spin it in but what's the cue ball doing so obviously he can't avoid the other red so he's got to try and control the cannon and in no one doing controlling the cannon he's missed the pot so it's how quick things can escalate just didn't land where he wanted to on the last shot and Red's still, well, they don't really have an advantage there. Joe pots this one in the middle. All the yellows go. Didn't block the pocket, so if you block that bottom left pocket, this would be trickier, but if anything, that red's helping Joe. So you can pot the first ball clean, the second one's got a big pocket. You're happy enough with that as a plant, rather than trying to get to the potting angle of the one nearest the bottom left? I would personally want to take them individually, but obviously... The thing if you end up with the plant, the other yellow's tracking away and the red's not going to move very far, so the, sec the ball you're hitting for the plant might end up a little bit smelly. <laughs> Obviously, the obvious shot would be to leave it to the bottom right, but that's not an option, you know, so... Yeah, I think they're just slightly offset, aren't they? And the yellow's coming away from the cushion that you hit, so... Um, he is playing the plant. Just got to be careful, really. It's very easy for this yellow to end up tied up. He's obviously playing on the one through the gap there that's just below the eight ball as his next shot. You don't want to play on the ball you're planting, ideally, so it's good that he's picking another ball up, but we'll see whether the yellow goes after this. It should do, but there's a risk. And he's been lucky, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I was worried about, but I think he's well. absolutely perfect, is he? Well, maybe it's a little bit tight. He had a longer look on that than I thought. It does look like it goes. He's doing a Phil Harrison. <laughs> oh, has he? He's all right. He's yeah, he's got the angle. He can get down. Watch this sail in a hundred mile an hour <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> Punch it out for the black. did as well all that looking he's absolutely blasted it in definitely a uh, a little teaser obviously on the outside tables there aren't going to be many matches that complete in 70 minutes but they don't have a shot clock so they have allocated 90 minutes on the outside tables which feels about right as well obviously you're going to get one or two that will go slightly longer but you'll get a few that go slightly quicker and it will keep the tournament moving along yeah I mean the, the organisers are very experienced now, aren't they, at running these events and how how likely... It's very difficult when there aren't match clocks on the outside table or shot clocks to, to track it, but they've got enough data from running many tournaments to make sure we're not playing till 2 or 3 in the morning like they sometimes do in America. <laughs> yeah. And how was your trip out there? Good, yeah. No, exciting news with obviously Altmore Paul USA launching. First tournament's only, what, three, four weeks away now. 19th to 21st of April in Louisiana. Yeah, very excited to, to get going out there. 
you went, did you go to Vegas? Was it all? Yeah. So the, there's another pool event on, wasn't there? Yeah, I went out. Yeah, it was good. Great to see the passion out there. I think it was eight or nine thousand ball players in in one building, which there is quite incredible. Was there really? Yeah. What playing? Playing, what? yeah. No, yeah. a thousand, nine thousand. Yeah. I think there was five hundred and fifty tables. I can't even I can't even comprehend that. I didn't, I didn't know it was that big. That was their their equivalent of our national finals kind of thing. So yeah, that's sort of that that, that teams. And yeah, essentially. <laughs> 550 tables you're on table 550 sir you've got 5 minutes to get there but it takes half an hour <laughs> oh Matty that wasn't easy but missed that by quite a long way just the cannon wasn't he maybe concentrating on the cannon it was it was a kind of a tricky little layout they all had a pocket but they had to be taken in, in that order didn't land as nice as he wanted to on, on the yellow he had there and very easy to miss not not a great layout for Joe. He can move the yellow next shot, which is probably what he'll do, but oh fluke. Oh, it hasn't dropped. They tightened the pockets up here. I thought it was dropping all day. Yeah, it's good that they're staying up. So I think he's got to punch the long one in first. And this does go. Which makes it a bit smellier going this way. That's a nice shot. Yeah, I think if he can track towards the air... Oh, he might even take this now, actually. Yeah, he's landed, landed on its bottom right. Take it now. I think leave the one... I don't know. None, none of it really connects that easy. He could take the one to middle now, then try and get back here and play this shot, because this, this would be a nice spot to be on the eight ball. Well, it wouldn't have been, actually. That he's too straight, so... But again, these two don't connect well. He's going to kind of screw straight back somewhere near that red on the cushion. Hope he's got a nice angle to just drift across to the right cushion last. Under hit it. So, do you drop this in and leave yourself a smelly eight ball where he's just missed a similar shot, or a slightly easier shot, at his last visit to the table? Or do you try and punch it round off the left cushion, top cushion, with a bit of right-hand side to kind of track that down towards the middle? That shot is on, but it's a smelly shot. He's leaving a double. Back double. We saw Joe make one of these earlier where there was almost no room. You've got to watch the cue ball following the eight ball in as well in the same pocket on this one. So even if you do make it. Oh, brilliant shot. The Reds were blocking the line. Calm as you like as well, wasn't it? It wasn't good on that double. No. Very nice shot. And he's middled one. So you'll see the spin on the cue ball, but he's middled it. Controlled the white perfectly. Lots of power. Look at the balls. A lot of them travelled up the table and back down again. So fantastic break. Still <laughs> feels like a little bit of work to do at first glance. The yellows feel like they've got more options. So probably go yellows. And it's just that one tied up with the two reds near the pocket. The middle pocket to deal with, and, and the one near his hand, to be fair. So he's trying to get on that now. Great shot. I'm not sure if with the other yellow, whether he can just graze the red on the way through and still pot it to the far jaw and open up that, that other yellow. I think that's his thinking. It's a really good first shot to leave this one. He's is exactly how he played it. He is playing that. So he just wants to graze the red. This is missable because... The, cue, the yellow will go in the far jaw or the pocket. You want to play it dead weight and just let it drop in. He's played it way too hard. Yeah, that's always going to throw wide playing it at that pace. So he said it had to be a graze, didn't it? It had to just be a feather off it. Yeah, it would have been enough. If you played it dead weight, it would have moved the red enough. Because you could catch more of the red. Obviously, the softer you play it, the less the yellow throws wide off, off the red there. But Because, I mean, at that pace, you had to literally catch the, catch the wafer edge of it um, to pot it. So... Very tough shot the way he played it. At soft, there was quite a bit of margin for error. He's kind of given the frame away, really. So he's just got to get this next shot right. I think he'll track between the two reds here, leave the one to the post to the right middle next, then top left, and then the one near this ball last, track down for the red in the bottom half of the table. So that's what he's playing. 
middle right, top left, middle right. Drift down. All natural angles. Nothing to do with the cue ball, so. Just want to land somewhere around the black spot area here. Yeah, perfect. On that line anyway, so he didn't want to be drifting up the table particularly, but he can keep drifting down the table from that angle. He's, he's ball in hand, perfect there. Lovely shot. Easy as that for Joe O'Connor. Got himself in the perfect line from the first shot, and then it's just making the balls. Nope, you're right there, Leo. Yeah, you're right. He's wrong. <laughs> I'll teach him how to read a draw one day. I'm, I'm sharing with him, so. Oh, yeah. We're just checking the draws. Yes, <laughs> we're going through it. We are. The graphic is right. We can confirm, <laughs> which is always good. And a good break for, for Joe as well. He's got it back working again. So it hasn't worked for a couple. And what a layout. What yeah. a layout. You just Best one of the day. And this is what he did all on that Pro Series. And he just kept getting ball off the break and chances similar to this and just kept taking them out and I say it was a bit unlucky against Christophe Lambert in the final although Christophe played great he had one shot that kind of turned the match around where if you haven't seen it on the socials it has done the rounds on was, multiple occasions he was snookered he tried to hit the eight ball full ball he grazed it it was down the bottom half of the table he grazed it very thin towards the top right corner where there was a yellow sat block in the pocket and the cue ball followed it around and just Flicked the yellow out the way enough that there was a half a pocket for the eight ball to just slot into. And yeah, one of the craziest shots I've ever seen. And it was right towards Joe's seat as well, so he'd have seen it happening the whole way. Yeah, a sickener <laughs> for sure. It was incredible. Originally, he was thinking of dropping that in and taking it top left, but had just a touch too much angle. No bother to take it right centre. Yeah, that's a nice shot. To, to They're not as easy to control as he's just made that look, really. It's kind of a punch stun, and it's a lot easier where the cue ball's the same size as the object ball when you've got a small white. It's quite a feel shot. Great break. Great break. That's so unlucky, is it? Oh. Stays what a break. Look at the spot spinning though. He still comes across it, but he squares up the front ball this time. And wow. Oh, they what's, left, what's left on the table? Those balls were rattling in everywhere. <laughs> That's brilliant. So yeah, I mean, even though he's played with spin, he's lo you lose, obviously you do lose power when you spin the white sideways. And uh, yeah, it doesn't, didn't matter. He hits it so hard. Just the two on the bottom right, though, we're given the superlatives. Those two just need a little bit of care. These last three aren't uh, not gimmies in my eyes. you still got, still got to make sure you you land good. Those kind of blockers, that yellow is just annoying. Otherwise, you could just use the cushion and track across with that yellow near the red here that he's playing now. Which means he's got to work the cue ball a little bit. And how's he looking? Not ideal. Not ideal at all. He's still on either ball, but they're both very thin. I think I prefer the one down the cushion, to be honest. Natural line to track across two cushions. Back to that centre line on the table, the racking line. It's a pretty natural shot, this. Just got to back yourself to make the pot. Yeah. Nice. Brilliant pot. Needs another one. This is delicate into the centre, but easier than one he's just made. Yeah, it was about a foot further than he would have liked ball in hand, but uh, still, still fine. All about the pot. Nothing to do with the cue ball. Lovely. Yeah, this is a really good finish. Um, great break and uh, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of care to be taken, and he's done it well. Plenty of good matches going on here. Obviously, we're focusing on this one with Joe O'Connor and Matty Challen, and this is a fantastic match as well. 7-6. Red ball in the middle again. 
It's just on repeat. Another really good layout. Yeah, just the red to right centre first is slightly tricky. You could catch that break thin and still made the ball to the middle. You can see the cue ball tracking across twice. It does sometimes go in that pocket, but he doesn't have to drop this in. He can hit it a bit firmer, which is nice. Um, and he's not tight to the cushion either, so expect him to pot this and finish him off. Middle of the pocket. And I think the two reds that are together, the one furthest right does go to the right corner. So I'm going to land fairly straight on that. So we found the other red next to it to the opposite centre pocket. Yeah, just got to work these three out. It's a lovely shot, natural angle to drift down. Yeah, they do need a little bit of working out, even from here. Just got to be careful. Yeah, I don't mind deep screwing. I don't think he's playing. I think he's just dropping it in. But I wouldn't mind deep screwing between the red and yellow there off the cushion. Oh, what a shot he's played there. That is a lovely shot. You see, he didn't have much room to work with. He's found his ball in hand perfect again. Just keeps doing it. Pinch the pocket there so he can play the one to left middle next. Yeah, lovely touch. That was a really nice shot. It's another break and finish, two in a row, isn't it? Um, for Joe. Yeah, three. Well, three with Matty's as well. Yeah, yes. they're going blow for blow right now. You'd rather be going blow for blow when the scores are level, though, rather than... Uh, he nearly lost the white there. <laughs> well, you say that, but from Joe's perspective, he's happy because he can he'd say, I'll take this all the way through now. Let's just oh keep yeah. going. You know, I'll, I was I'll talking from Matty's perspective. From Matt, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's always the one that's going to have to keep chasing from two behind, and that's where he is now, 8-6. There still will be upsets, and obviously Paul can still turn. And another great break. 10 still isn't that long. It's longer, long for ultimate pool terms, but still... You know, challenge matches are normally to 25 or, or 30, and sometimes they can even feel like they hinge on one or two moments. Not sure we can fit a race to 25, double a limb, 128 into a, no, a three-day. I'm, I'm not suggesting that. <laughs> what I'm saying is it's a long race, but it's not as long as yeah, yeah. you can play. Oh, what a shot. Beautiful first shot. Judge that to perfection. And that is how you do all your work in one shot. Now it's just tidying it up. Be a tiny bit careful here. You don't want to catch the red on the way out. This one you want to play over just a fraction of check side. Yeah, nice. See how close you got to the red there. If you catch the red, it can uh, make things awkward. So, nice couple of shots to just get in and out of that problem area. Just the eight ball. Obviously, you've got to get back again. Most likely to play it in the right centre. Just get down the table. So... Mind your work here. Oh, this is not good. Is it? It's just okay. Just, literally just. I don't think he can avoid the middle pocket, above the middle pocket. I think he's got to go below. Not sure. It's very close to in off this, the natural line. So you see him digging. How's it looking? Okay, that's fine. I might have played that, to be fair. Yeah, there's no bad cannons coming down on that line, really. He's always going to give himself a shot, but this is as good Perfect. as it could be. Yeah. And another great response. That's four straight, two apiece now. Been going close every break. Well, not this time. Caught that one slightly. That's probably the worst strike of the whole uh, match for him on the cut break. Yeah, they split completely differently, haven't they? Just that touch thinner, I think. Do you think? Maybe yeah, yeah, it was. Just it the was. touch thinner. You, you see, see the cue lower. Yeah. yeah, the cue ball was tracking towards the opposite um, corner, but it got it got kicked. But yeah, you're right. You've got a real Hawkeye for this, Simon. I have done a lot of commentary on this uh, on this arena. I didn't pick up that he caught that thin then, first glance. A lot of it's sound, actually, though. It just sounds different. You know, just you see that the way it explodes and the, the sound it gives off, it's just not the same. Oh, that's flirting with danger. He has a backup plan. I, can still I like red off yellow here to play the plant. It opens that okay. whole area up. He's pretty much dead straight on it as well. Then he's only got one problem ball left. Red off yellow. Get the yellow out of the way. 
It's a real natural shot. I know, he's not playing it. Mm. Now, now it's probably best best to hold back. We've had a dish fest. He's trying to double, is he? I don't mind the double because you kind of block. Yeah, I don't even know if he necessarily wanted that in, but it's a nice shot. Opens up the area. I mean, there is a finish for Joe, and he's left him plumb straight on his awkward ball to the top right. Kind of forced to go for it, really. But there's a finish there. The eight ball will skill shot, worst case, to the bottom right, or combination shot to the bottom right. Last, so yeah, there's, these all go. I wasn't sure if that was in, but I mean, at that pace in these conditions, that's always dropping. Even though it did did hit the near jaw. Just the eight ball. Imagine. I don't know how comfortable Joe would be with a combination shot. But oh, he's missed. Wow. It looked like he was lined up there as well. That's the third ball he's missed in the match, and they've not been that tricky either. Good temperament. You see, he just wipes it away. It's like it never happened. He never shows anything out there. No, he's had a few smiles today, which yeah. is, uh, again, unusual. He doesn't normally show that side of things either. But, yeah, if you're going to show any emotion, it's better to, better to have a laugh about something than be upset about it. If you do have to show anything, I mean, it's very hard to show no emotion. You know, it's very difficult for me anyway. But try and show the minimum. Lost the cue ball there. This is trouble. I don't think he can hold with the only potable ball he's got right now. And I don't think he can go around the table with it either. If he did, it'd be threading the needle. Can he hold? Maybe he can hold in the middle of the table here. Really tried to pot it thick. You could hold that, to be fair, but that was, that was a smelly one. He could pot it thinner and still hold. You're right. That's... Uh such a big frame as well. And what's Joe got to go out here? Is there, is there a realistic pot on? Probably not. He's obviously got a couple of thin options to the top left corner, but he's going to try and place a bit of a shot to nothing. There's not, not many places to hide the white, so he'd rather this one in. But he's thinking he might get some cover if he misses it. Oh, and he has found the cover. Wow. You can see there wasn't much room there to cover both. And uh, that could be a frame winner. Could be a f effectively a match winner. This is a big swerve. Oh, I don't like this. You catch the jaw in the middle pocket here. Oh, that's a great shot. What a shot. What a shot. Has he gone too far? That was brilliant. That's so hard to do there. Nearly caught the middle pocket. You can see just, just missed it. And yeah, just kind of caught the red a bit thin. But I think that was about as good as you could do from there. That's a brilliant shot, isn't it? You can play the one to right middle. And if you play this with right hand side, I think you avoid the cannon on the yellow where you get it thin enough. I don't think you can get away playing this plain ball. I think you just need a fraction of right on it. Plain ball, you probably. No, he did play a plain ball, and he's. What a shot. What oh, a shot. Fabulous. Brilliant. And now he's in shape to make it all square. This is some finish if he gets these. Absolutely fantastic from Matty Challen. We're all level again. What a match this has been. Brilliant. Couple of real good shots there. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Look at it. Ball's going in everywhere. Again, I mean, his break's been unbelievable in this match. And it's not that the cue ball's done the same thing on any of them, really. <laughs> it's just pure brute power. The only thing that's been consistent is there's been a ton of spin on it. <laughs> and a ton of power on it. Yeah, fair play. That is true. But he is, he's, he's by and large flushing the front ball, even if he's getting spin on it. And the power is there for all to see. I think you can play the one to right middle, the red to right middle, and 
as long as you don't pot it thin, you'll catch those two reds. Oh, he's going yellows. Fair enough. It's a bit of a smelly first shot, but very nice. <laughs> he's making the pockets look like huge at the minute. I'm not sure on the eight ball there. I mean, my first glance was reds there for that finish. The yellows are tricky. Reds were tricky first shot. You didn't have much control on the first shot, but then could have um, had more options from there. Yellows are very much got to be pinpoint. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm assuming the eight ball must go to the bottom right corner, but it looks tight. Definitely goes top left, but no way of really getting back down there with any control. It's a really nice shot. Didn't want too much angle on that. Wanted to be as straight as possible on that. The red was in the way, so he's played that ball in hand perfect. So if the vehicle does go bottom right, he's done done the work now. Just got to mind his work, but I'm assuming for sure it does. It. Yeah. Yeah. And he's looking at the angle now. It's just another really nice. This has been a really nice finish. Two cushions here. Track the line. No, just one. Fine. I think he's trying to avoid using cushions because they're confusing him, which is absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> you've got to hack your way around there. Yeah, loads of room, like you said. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Again, watch this red he's hitting, tracking towards the right middle. Most of the match he's been getting that ball. And it's gone low this time. Needs Any a other ball. friends? No. He's desperate. Well, he's at least he's not left it easy. There's only one problem, red, really, but there's no obvious way to get in there. With a way of guaranteeing being on another ball, so doesn't have a great opener. There's a couple of options up the table, but neither of them ideal. Oh, he's got one right centre. Ignore me. Just um, yeah, the red kind of in the bottom left corner of the racking triangle. That is a good ball to kind of bounce off the bottom cushion, split those two up. The problem is that what you're going to be on after. You always want to be playing for another ball when you're playing a cannon and. I mean, if, if that red sat over the top right, it would have been great, but it hasn't. So he's going into this here. Don't want to hit it too hard. But you need to land on the ball you're hitting, so it's asking a lot. Does he have some middle pocket here? Looking at the overhead, I'd say he does have some pocket. If there's not on direct, maybe the double. The double does go. I think he's playing direct. Yeah, he's yeah. got a quarter half a pocket, pocket, half a yeah. pocket. Nice shot. Oh, grazes the yellow on the way. Just feathered. Well, just ignored it. Just <laughs> looked like he was going to graze it, it and go yeah. in, didn't it? Which it was, went in. He's had a couple of those in this match. He's really got a, had a beautiful touch once he's kind of got that feel out there, isn't he? Yeah. After the first couple of frames, he's really, yeah, just done what he can with the table, basically. He's worked out what's comfortable and what's not, and he's kind of avoided what's not. It's been really impressive to watch, watch him kind of get to grips with conditions out there. Now well, these three balls aren't aren't um, that well connected. I'm assuming the one top right is going to be his next ball after this, um, and he can get round the back of the eight ball. But again, that's leaving the one bottom left till last, which isn't isn't ideal. There's a lot of yellows blocking you getting back to the eight ball, so this is tough from here. And throw into the mix as well. It will be his first experience of 15 seconds a shot, which is coming in about we 15 snuck seconds into time. That next shot. Wow. Yeah. Well, maybe not next shot. He might just hit this before. Oh, no, he's not going to now, is it? It's going to be 15 seconds, and he's not going to be aware of that either. And that transition this is going to hit him like you. a train. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Then it, is it for this shot or not? No, I think I think he's going to get away with it. It's going to be 30 seconds. Oh no, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, you've got to watch out here, mate. Wrong side of the table. He hasn't got an extension. This is going to catch him right out. Oh, he's got time. He's all right. Calm as you like, isn't it? It's like he's, like he's oh, a he's hugely experienced at 15 seconds a shot, and he pulls out a beautiful shot. Can he just, just bump into... I don't think he can avoid the yellow on the way back, so can he just leave the white there? And Yeah, he can, yeah. It's perfect. Just soft screw. And he should be done. Right. Barring anything very unusual, what a match we've seen. He took these really well. And, you know, the transition didn't catch him out either. Fantastic oh. match. Brilliant performance from Matty Challen. That is a fantastic first taste of the Ultimate Pool Arena. Brilliant performance.